Okay, it's a Javon. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Craft Chat with Matt. My name is Matt, and I am one of the owners and designers here. Let's get wreathing. How y'all doing this morning? If y'all would, please give a warm, warm welcome to our guest this morning, Miss Debbie Viola with Art by Debbie Viola. How are you doing this morning, Debbie? Hey, everybody. Hey, Matt. I am doing fantastic. How about you? I'm great. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Regina. Hey, Andrea. Y'all, if you would, go ahead and take a minute to hit that thumbs up button. Hit that little arrow button down in the corner and sprinkle us out to everybody. Send us out to your peoples. Um, Debbie, if you want to go ahead and share this over to your page to get your peoples in here. Let me see how I could do that. If you pull it up on my page, Debbie, um, you can um, send it over to your page. OK. Hang on. How y'all doing this morning? How was your Christmas? Mine was great. Deb, you said you had the grandkids, right? Me, yes. We we have four grandchildren. My daughter has eight-year-old twins, and my son has a four-year-old and a five-month-old. We didn't see my son. Um, he's newly recovered from COVID, and we have... Um, our 94 and 98 year old moms that live with us. So the doctor said, you know what, G give it an extra week. So unfortunately we didn't get to see our son, but we did get to see our daughter. So it was partial virtual. Well, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Good morning, Ernie. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Ernie, how you doing? All right. Cheers. So let me show you what we're working with this morning. So this is our color palette this morning. We're working with burgundies and creams and olive greens. Isn't that pretty? Pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay, good. Now I'm sharing it. Come hang on. Okay. So before I jumped on the call this morning, Demi, I burnt myself on my glue pot. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, that hurt. Oh, jeez. Morning, Dustin. Morning, Leanne. Come on in, y'all. Yes, Ernie, we missed you at our slumber party last night. <laughs> Ernie was probably already slumbering. Already slumbering? <laughs> A lady in my pri in my private painting club, Miss Kathy, she um, she kind of bet that I would not go online on Christmas night, let alone with my pajamas on. She dared me, and I did. <laughs> and there were a whole bunch of you that came on, so that was kind of fun, right, Matt? It was good seeing you yeah. there, and you reminded everybody about today. So here we are. So this is a new shirt I got for Christmas, y'all. It says, be kind, 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 be kind to one another. That's awesome. So if y'all would, please be kind to one another. <laughs> That's all we ask. Simple but powerful words, especially in this exactly. current world we live in, right? All right. So Debbie, I'm going to change cameras and we're okay. going to go ahead and get started. Okay. I'm just all getting right. myself set up here as well. All right, so we're going to be working on an 18 inch grapevine today, today y'all. And we are going to be using the burgundy, burgundy, cream. These are cream roses. And then I just have some olive green florals to throw in here. 
love olive green. So, and we just got some uh, ficus that we're going to be using for our greenery, y'all. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. Can you all please zoom in? Uh, surely that's about as close as I can get it, darling. Yeah, morning, looks, good. Come. looks good for my ends. I think once you start putting all the beautiful florals on it, it'll start coming to life for everybody. Debbie Leanne wants to know what you're painting today. Oh, hi, Miss Leanne. Well, I was going to do flowers and then we were chatting the other night and I'm starting to do faces. And I did that whimsical lady in the background and people were loving it. And I've been doing faces in my group. So I'm going to paint a face a lady with flowers in her hair. And Leanne, do you know the cow sills? Do you re I don't know if you're old enough. I'm uh, giving away my age, but the cow sills was a singing group, kind of like, you know, the Osmonds or the Partridge family, not quite as popular. Um, in fact, they inspired the Partridge family, that TV show. Um, but I grew up in the 60s and 70s, and there was a group, the Cow Sills, and um, I'm, I'm certainly not going to sing right now, but there's a, <laughs> when, we when we're talking about painting a lady and flowers, like, oh, flowers in our hair, and then I thought of a song by the Cow Sills, and that's one of the lines, and I can't get it out of my head, so I'm kind of picturing a lady with flowers in her hair, a whimsical flower girl. Good morning, Andy. Child. Good morning, Wanda. Leanne says, love it. Okay, sounds good. And I'm going right for it. I'm sketching live in front of a whole bunch of people. I'm letting my guard down now. I might as well be sitting here half naked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even using a watercolor pencil that I can erase, which is something I would normally do. Um, I could not find watercolor pencils the past few days. Everything really? was gone. Yeah, everything was gone. And I had a whole pack because by day, I'm um, a decorative painter and muralist um, here in New York. I've had a decorative painting business for 20 years. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah. So I need a lot of watercolor pencils when I go and sketch a mural on someone's wall. But since my mom has been living with us, um, she's bored out of her mind now with COVID. She can't do anything. She can't leave the house unless I take her for a walk. So I would, you know, so I gave her my watercolor pencils and bought her a, water, um, a coloring book and she loves it. So now all my watercolor pencils have gone down to like, they can't be sharpened anymore. Oh my so, God. Yeah, so for Christmas, I bought her a big set of like regular colored pencils, but I couldn't find watercolor pencils to replace them myself. So I am going. Did you try, uh, I don't know what I you have, have in New York. Do you have like Hobby Lobby and Michaels and? Yeah, yeah, both of them within a, a mile from me and they didn't have them. They were out. Even the paints were like almost all gone. And wow. then I tried, yeah, and I tried online, but it was like too late to get. So I'm winging it here. For those that are, of you that are just joining us, my name is Matt, and I am one of the owners and designers here at hmm, Let's Get Reaping, and our guest today is Debbie Viola. Hi, everybody. She is an artist based out of Long Island. Yeah. Long Island, New York. And we met during a live stream palooza, uh, what was it, back in November? November. I think, was, was it thanks, Thanksgiving weekend, maybe? Possibly. Yeah. Um, I but I was a designer and she was a designer. And we've just kind of became friends from there, y'all. Hey, Stacy. So if you haven't already, head on over and give Debbie's page some love. And then if you haven't already, give my page some love. That would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, my page is Art by Debbie Viola. So Debbie, do you sell your art? Um, Pre-COVID. So, where can they get it? I, ever since um, the lockdown, I've been going live on my page 
every night until recently. Now I have a schedule. It's four nights a week, but I started going live at around midnight Eastern time. Mm -hmm. And the, the more I went live, the more people started watching me. And at the beginning of the lockdown, I said, you know what, when this is over in two weeks, I want to show something for it. So let me, let me commit to painting. And I'm like, if I just told myself, okay, tonight you're going to paint, you know, it doesn't happen. Uh, life gets in the way. So I said, if I go live, then I'm forced to, you know, commit to that. So let me just go live every night and I'll do a painting a night. And that's what I started doing. And I've amassed, I have cabinets full. I have like a couple of hundred paintings that I've done just from my lives. So the short answer is yes, I sell my work, but I haven't, I never thought about it strategically. Like, oh, every painting I should put up on my website or I should start an Etsy shop. And so they are for sale, but people don't really know it. Um, but prior to this whole experience now, I have been, um, I have a website. It's my name, DebbieViola.com. Uh, it's being revamped, but I think it's in good enough shape that, you know, people could go look at it. Mm -hmm. And um, over the years, I've also worked with interior designers and I do like a lot of um, custom commissions. So there's a lot of uh, what most people would think is like pricey work on there. My, my larger pieces sell for, you know, a couple of thousand dollars, but there's also smaller ones on there for like under a hundred dollars, but not all of my work is listed on my website. So that was a very long answer. The short answer is yes, I do sell my work. <laughs> as, as I was painting during the pandemic, people were buying what I was painting. like, you know, hold that one on the side for me. And then they would send me a message like, okay, how much is that? And, you know, could you make me another coordinating one? So it was kind of fun selling my art, like as I was painting it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. So when did you start doing lives? Was it just at the start of the, the pandemic or was it before so, that? No, it, it was before that I did lives, I'd say about a year ago. About about two years ago, I decided, you know what? I want to figure out a way to get down off of ladders and scaffolding because I'm, I'm currently 62 years old and I don't want to push my luck. I've been pretty lucky. <laughs> um, I've had, you know, there's a lot of horror stories in the industry. I know somebody, she lost a spleen. She fell off, the, off of the scaffold. She just oh lost gosh. her body. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, you know what? There's got to be a safer way to... Uh, to do what I do and um, still make a living out of it. So I, I started researching and Googling like how to sell art online. And then I discovered that not only could I sell it, but I also could like teach painting, which I absolutely love. Cause over the years I've taught thousands of local New Yorkers how to paint from ages four to 80. And I, and I loved it. I love when people would say, oh my God, I can't paint. I can't draw a straight line. Like the 80 year old woman it was at her um, daughter's birthday party. Um, she's like, this is the first time I ever held a paintbrush in my hand. And she did phenomenal. And she was like, so thrilled. So it was so wonderful to like, you know, to see people's reaction, you know, that I'm helping them learn how to paint. So that like kind of lit me up more than the idea of like just selling my art. So um, with that, last year, I opened up a painting club, like a monthly membership subscription for less mm -hmm. than a dollar a day. It's kind of like Netflix for art. Yeah. And um, I have a lovely bunch of ladies in there, but I promoted it just by, you know, of course, I took classes on how to do it the right way and have webinars and do emails, but that was like scary to me. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like, I just, I just want to paint. I don't want to do that business stuff. So I'm like, how can I tell people about it? And at that point I had started to go on live and painting and people were liking it. I didn't go every day, but I started talking about my painting club. And before I knew it, I had like, a, you know, a dozen members that once I said, okay, it's live, it's open. They joined right away and they're still with me today and a year later and now I have another bunch of uh, new ladies that have joined and they're loving it so you know I'm like I'm moving like at a snail's pace like a turtle but in a way it's better because if I would have gotten like 100 people at the beginning like I wouldn't have been able to serve them the way I do now you know now it's nice and intimate and now I say you know what guys by now they know I go live every Wednesday inside the group it's like you tell me 
what do you want me to teach you this week? You know, rather than me having a regimented schedule, which I do have, I do tutorials on all sorts of things and I put them inside the group. So right now there's a library of like about a hundred videos mm -hmm. in there from all different sorts of things like landscapes, seascapes, palette knife art, fashion, uh, florals, abstracts, um, animals, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. Everything that I've learned over 20 years, I'm like, you know, piling it on and giving it to my ladies. So they go in at their leisure and, you know, go through the library and say, oh, today I want to learn how to paint a cardinal and do that. But there's also the weekly lessons with me. And so I try to cater that to whatever anybody wants. So it's working out nice. It's a lot of fun. They're enjoying it. I get great feedback. And that all started from doing Facebook Lives. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So that's like, you know, how to grow your audience. And, and you never know what it leads to, because I had no idea that I was being followed by a New York publisher, not, not a big like Random House publisher, but nevertheless, a New York publisher approached me about a year ago. And she says, I, you know, we've been following your journey and I absolutely love what you do. And you're probably like, what? Yeah. And we want you to write a book. And I'm like, this is Debbie Viola. Are you sure you have the right person? <laughs> <And> <laughs> like, yes, you're exactly who we want to talk to. You know, we've been following your journey. We saw how you turned a hobby into a, you know, how you had the gumption to quit a successful career and quit your job 20 years ago and here 19 years ago and here you are like still standing running a thriving business and you just like keep evolving and doing different things so we want you to write a book that will inspire women all over the world and I'm like are you sure you got the right person you know so <laughs> it, it's wild it was about to come out we were finishing it up like right before the pandemic and then of course you know the pandemic um so I don't know what's up now, if we're going to have like a virtual launch or just wait until who knows, maybe by the spring things will be different. And here in New York, we could have like a big event. It was supposed to be a launch at a Barnes and Noble. Uh, but it's um, the, the working title is Art and Decorative Painting for the Home. So the beginning is like all chapters, you know, she wanted to know my story, how I got started, how I, why I left my job after September 11th, 2001, and what, what maybe, you know, turned to art and try to grow a business that way. And um, and then the rest is like different chapters, like this one chapter on like uh, refurnish, refurbishing like fireplaces, brick fireplaces. And there's like a little um, to do, like how to, a little DIY page where I'm just kind of showing step-by-step. Step. So the book, um, the purpose of the book is to be um, for DIYers, for interior designers. So they have like an inspiration book to show their clients like, look, you could do this on your walls or you could do this on your, because a lot of people, they don't have a vision. They have like a, they want to buy a house, but there's this ugly red brick fireplace. I'm like, oh, I can't buy this house because of that fireplace. Like, no, no, no. It. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But a lot of people. And I've seen it over the years with clients like they they just some people just don't have the vision. They just can't picture like, you mean you can make these Formica cabinets look like wood grain? I'm like, yes, I can. You know, but until you show them, they don't understand. So mm -hmm. she wants it to be like they want it to be like a coffee table book, a book for designers, a book for DIYers and a book of inspiration. So. I'm excited, but you know, I was more excited a year ago before the pandemic when it, this was all happening. But um, nevertheless, it's it, it's been a journey, you know. You know yourself, Matt, as an entrepreneur and doing it yourself. You don't know where things are going to lead you to. Exactly. Um. So, Debbie. Yes, sir. Our friend Gary is here, aka Shorty, and he hey, always Gary. reminds us to drink. So, because a lot of times we'll get in the design zone and we forget to stay hydrated. This is true. Thank you, Gary. Well, I just have water today. And a cup that I painted, of course. And a, -Aid. And a cup that I got for Christmas. <laughs> Cheers. So, thank you, Gary. Yes, I always drink. I'm always walking around with a bottle of water. But he is amazing. He's on everybody's live and he always reminds us to drink. That's awesome. Public service announcement. Public service announcement. 
All right, so this is what I'm at so far. So, oh, oh I love it. We're just kind of going in, trying to decide where I want to add this in it. Do I want it here? Matt, how long have you been uh, crafting and wreathing? Since March. Oh, wow. <laughs> awesome. It started at the beginning of the pandemic. So I, I have a nine to five job. Okay. okay. So I work for um, the county of Dallas. Mm -hmm. And um, we were, we worked up until March 23rd. Okay. And then we shut down mm -hmm. for six weeks. And so at that point, me and my sister, we decided we were going to start our business. So we did. We got all the paperwork and mm -hmm. all that filed, you know. And uh, well, let me back up. The original idea for it came from watching one of Jim's live stream Paloozas back ah. in March. I think it was one of the first ones he did. Uh huh. Jim's awesome. And uh, well, that's not sticking in there now, are you? Um. So. And then that's how I got my start in this community. Uh huh. And that's a great start. <laughs> things have just kind of blossomed from there. And I made my mom a wreath. It's actually right here behind me. It's this one. So it's, it's a little beer. Oh. So this is the very first one I did. Oh, that's beautiful. And that's what kind of kicked off my everything business. Look at all that detail. Oh, gorgeous. And then I've just kind of gotten better and better and better. Yeah. Um, so like my very first Halloween wreath, it was awful and if y'all try and find that live you will not find it because i deleted it <laughs> oh no he's supposed to save your humble days <laughs> oh no, it was awful it looked really bad <laughs> so that live is no longer out there i deleted it so oh Lori, thank you she said we're both amazing artists oh thank you Lori. Good morning, Mandy. Hey, Jan. I'm just kind of catching up on the comments here. Yes, yes. Well, I didn't pick up a paintbrush until I was 40. Um, except for I, I posted a picture last night, except for something I did in second grade, <laughs> a, a, like a stained glass painting of uh, the Blessed Mother and Jesus. I went to a Catholic school, um, but besides that, I didn't pick up a paintbrush until I was 40. I always wanted to, but I went, went to a Catholic business high school and um, they made me take algebra instead of- Ooh, I hated algebra. Yes, me too, instead <laughs> of art. <laughs> Go figure. Um, so I came straight out of high school and I became a legal secretary in New York City. I think my first job was four bucks an hour. Woohoo! Um, when was this? I graduated high school in 1976. So $4, what was minimum wage back then? Was I don't know, maybe, maybe it was $3, I don't know. know the minimum wage has come a long way since then, so. Well, I, I got married in 1978 and our apartment was $200 a month. Oh, so, um, okay. You know, just, just to put a perspective on what, what things were back in the olden days, as my grandchildren will say. And back in 1974, I wasn't even a thought. Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, so I just, I did what I knew how to do. I became a legal secretary. I typed like 120 words a minute and st stenography. Mm -hmm. And I was great at it. And the last job that I worked for, um, I worked for this attorney. He started out 
I started out with him when it was just him and he grew to a nine attorney law firm and I managed the law firm. I did all the work. And by the time I left him, I was there 23 years. And oh, wow. uh, yeah. And the more I was with him, the more like I couldn't stand him. He was like such a egoti egotistical workaholic narcissist. <laughs> Other than that. <laughs> um, well, and, and, to, and, what I'm about to tell you is going to sum him up. So I was with him on September 11th, 2001, when the World Trade Center was attacked here in New York. Our office was about, we were maybe about a mile or two, one, between one and two miles uptown, up further in midtown Manhattan, um, on the top Just floor of our the top floor of our building, the 60th floor. So I had just gotten to work and saw like the second explosion. So everything live, it was horrific, as you could imagine. Mm -hmm. um, and now, so we're all in a panic, screaming. But after we saw the buildings come down at 11 o'clock, I'm like, I have to get out of here. My daughter was a freshman in college, at a college in the city, Barnard. She was like another mile or two miles up further from me. Mm -hmm. And my boss was screaming that he thought his friend was in the building at a meeting. He's like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, but as I'm walking to the elevator, like I got to get out of here. I have to be with my daughter. I was walking up to be with her. Thank God my days of high heels were over and I had my sneakers on. Uh -huh. um, he follows me with work. Since you're leaving early today, could you do this at the dorm? And I'm like, I, no. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> my jaw dropped open. I like backed into the elevator because I was just like in shock between what was going on like I was in the middle of a horror movie and um what he just said I I couldn't believe it and as the door shut I'm like I'm done you know but but being a practical responsible person I forced myself to stay until my last little Christmas bonus um and I quit right after Christmas. I got my bonus and I quit. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I didn't spend those two months, those three months planning, like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to build up, you know, um, an audience. And I'm, I didn't know, I didn't even think about it. All I kept thinking was, I can't wait to quit. I can't, can't wait to quit. Like counting the days until my Christmas bonus, but not, not playing that cash job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but not thinking about what are my next steps, except I don't want to work for anybody but myself. And um, my husband said, well, give it a shot for a few months. And if it doesn't work, you know what you got to do. You just got to go get another job. And thankfully, here I am still standing, still in business for myself. Um, and it's, you know, pivoted and twisted and turned over the years. But I'm doing what I love to do. And it's certainly not easy being in business for yourself when you have to depend on waiting for your next phone call to get the next paycheck, you know. So there's all that that goes along with it. But. Here I am, and um, you know, now learning about the online world, I'm like this is my world now. You know, I'm so much. This is where I want to be. I want to help people, teach them how to paint, give them some tools to help them find comfort in art, right? Because who doesn't need something comforting during these trying times? And that's it. So that's what brings me here. And I found Jim through, oh, through our um, creative business coach, Serena, who was your first guest, right? And mm -hmm. Jim invited me to be on there. And that's how you and I met. And then you said, you know what? I'm going for it. I want to start craft chat with Matt. And you did it. And I, I did said, it. And, yeah, and good for you. And everybody's and that's another thing we do have in common is our business coach. Yes, yes. Serena is awesome. So, okay, there we go. Now we're cooking with Crisco. Let's see what color. I need a white right there. Electric blue eyes. Oh, there we go. 
And isn't it so nice, Matt, that the online worlds mostly is like collaboration over competition, right? Isn't that just mm -hmm. so awesome? Yeah. I mean, occasionally you'll get um, some negative Nancy's out there, but yeah, that's everywhere. Exactly. But luckily, knock on wood, no trolls yet. So that's a good thing. Yeah, and you just don't know what's going to happen. Like I've already been a guest on two podcasts. People felt like once they heard my story, they you know contacted me, which is cool. So you just my my mantra has been like you never know. You just never know who's watching, who's going to find you, what it's going to lead to, who's going to re recommend you to somebody. It's really crazy. And y'all, if, you, if you're not familiar with Debbie, she is like literally the female Bob Ross. <laughs> so if you are having a rough day, just go over and watch her um, and you will feel much better. I go live. My tentative schedule as of late has been, I go live about 9.30 Eastern uh, PM every night. I used to go midnight, but I'm making it earlier. Um, although a lot of people are begging me for the midnight and the 1 a.m. live, so I may throw in a couple of those again. Um, I go live on Sundays. I do scenic Sunday, so I paint, you know, like some sort of scene. Um, then Monday is Monday Madness, where um, I paint and, you know, I don't have a thought in my head of what I'm going to paint on Mondays until like right before the live and we just chit chat like we are now and in October I started this um, October was my birthday month I'm like you know I'm so appreciative of everybody that follows me and they keep coming back what could I do for them so I started this thing that on Mondays um, one of the commenters is going to be randomly selected and then on wild Wednesday when I paint at 9 30 I the random winner is announced. So I've been giving away a painting a week since um, October. I thought I was gonna stop at the end of the month, but so far I'm like, you know what, this has been fun. Let me just keep doing it. So that's Wild Wednesday. And then Friday, Friday night's a floral Friday where I paint, um, you know, where I do some sort of floral. And I've been having uh, workshops, uh, free workshops. I think I'm gonna start charging a little bit uh, in the new year, um, but like this, this painting, you know, slightly different, was a, a free workshop in October. And then, oh, I just put it away. Uh, the other night we did another one, uh, Snowman in a Love Bug. So, um, you know, trying to keep it fresh and different. But to that point that you never know, and being the female Bob Ross, um, I actually, I play my friends, uh, somebody that I know, a family friend, she plays, she's a, a music composer on the piano and she's amazing just classical piano music it's lovely so I I play that in the background and I get so many remarks from people that like oh my god you're calming voice you're like the female Bob Ross and I like kind of laugh at it because like yeah right but then once I got tagged in a post and like I didn't know why so I went to that and it was a woman describing me but she forgot my name and she's like this was a few months ago and she's like and there's this woman from New York there's this artist she has the most calming voice she's like the female Bob Ross and she has soft music in the background while she paints and she literally puts me to sleep and that's a compliment because in this pandemic I don't sleep anymore and someone that was watching that live were like, oh, I know who you're talking about. Her name is Debbie Viola. And then the woman goes, oh yeah, yes, it's Debbie Viola. So this person that was watching the live like tags me to let me know that like there's people across the country talking about you. So it's really, it's been unbelievable because at times you think like, you know, big deal, so I paint like 
what's the big deal? I should really stop this. People are probably trying to, you know, getting sick of seeing me. And then you get messages like that. And I got a wonderful message from someone that said, you know, for Christmas, like you are such a blessing and you've been such a light to so many of us, you know, during these dark times of our lives, despite what you have going on in your life, you, you still come on for us. So it's like, I don't think I could ever stop this now. You know, it's like, it, it's, the, it gives you the energy to just like, keep on just like words of encouragement just to let you know that you know it does make a difference so that's why I'm here and that's why I continue it all right so I'm just kind of lurking in the comments right now kind of sitting back and seeing where I want to go with this um so let's catch up here uh Magda says hello guys I'm kind of lurking over here you both are very talented artists hi Magda thank you uh, Leanne says, LOL, $4 was a lot of money back then. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, oh, Serena said her ears were burning, so she's in the house. Uh, hey, Serena. <laughs> uh, let's see. Regina White says, I just love getting to know our community a little better on a deeper level, all in one place. Thanks, Matt. Hi, Regina. How are you? Regina took my workshop the other night. Regina says, I loved your last workshop. Can't wait to try it. Oh, thank you. Uh, let's see what else. Now, Regina also says, yes, you are very calming, Debbie. I love the late lives when the world gets quiet. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Let's see if I missed anybody. Sometimes you just got to kind of stop and go back, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. Good morning, Kendi. Uh, she says, Kendi here from Kendi's Creations Handmade with Love in Youngwood, Pennsylvania. First timer, well, welcome. Hi, Kenzie. How are you? I am in New York, We're not that far here. from you. Yeah, she, Debbie's in New York. I'm in Dallas. So we're spanning i guess you could call us time travelers right now yeah there you go i'm an hour behind her and she's an hour ahead so that always makes me laugh whenever i go home to ohio i'm originally from ohio y'all oh is that right um, born and raised it always makes me laugh whenever i go home to ohio and then i come back home to texas i like does this make me a time traveler because i go back an hour <laughs> You gain an extra hour of your life. How cool was that? <laughs> so, but I still have um, literally pretty much all of my family still is still in Ohio. All my cousins and my grandma. And and how far away is that? It's about a thousand miles. Oh, okay. Um, but we typically fly home because otherwise it would be like a 16 or 18 hour drive. One oh, that's rough. But we fly home and it's only like a two hour flight. Oh, so, oh, that's like from here to Florida. So I'm like, we'll take a two hour flight. Need to break up that red up top. Get in there. Okay. So Matt, I love that you just said, you know what? I'm gonna start having a, a weekly craft chat and you went for it. For like months I've been saying, I keep getting pulled like I want to start a podcast and I'm like, no, what am I gonna talk about? But it keeps coming back to me. Uh -huh. And you, you're just like, ah, I'm just doing it. I'm going for it. So I commend you. you. Awesome. And, you know, I have been extremely blessed um, that I have had so many people say yes. I see your uh, roster, your lineup. Um, Because I was like, oh, I, okay. 
The one thing you need to learn about me is I am my own worst critic, okay? Aren't we all? Huh. And when I started this idea, I was just like, okay, nobody's going to want to sign up for this. Is it actually a real, like, is it going to be a good idea? Is it going to be a mm -hmm. success? And then people did. And I was just like, well, already then. And, you know, it's just, I mean, this whole idea started while watching a Tuesday talk with Serena. Ah. About collaboration. Uh huh. You know, and then I just started thinking, oh, there's more to the crafting world than just readers, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of how this idea was born. And it just kind of blew from there. I mean, we all have our own little like confidants, you know, that the people in, that we can talk to about anything and we know that they won't judge us and they'll be completely honest with us. Yeah. yeah. And for me, that person's Leanne. Oh. So I awesome. talk to her whenever I am freaking out. She calms me down. And when I first... When I first came up with this idea, I was literally freaking out to the point where I had to call her. She calmed me down. She talked to me. And she basically said, you need to go for this. And then I was like, can you give me some idea of who, who I should ask for some guests, you know? So she gave me some ideas and I sent out some invites and lo and behold, people said yes. Awesome. So I was truly blessed in that. And we have been really blessed this year to have our business started and going and somewhat successful. I mean, we're still building, but. Right, right. You know, every well, sales, really thing, you know, but yeah, and look at me now, Leanne, right? Look at you. And it makes sense. Like as a business person, like why wouldn't I want to be on somebody else's page and you that you're so supportive. You're always on my page and chatting with everybody and sharing. I mean, it's just great. You know, I try. <laughs> makes the creative worlds go round, right? Like yeah. if you Google something other than pandemics and politics to uh, look forward to. Well, if you think about it, everything that's on the news is all doom and gloom anyway. Yeah. So why wouldn't you want to make people's worlds a brighter place? And I mean, that's my closing statement. Yeah. You know, is always, always, always be you and not them. Never, ever let anybody change you. Right. Mm -hmm. And keep making the world a brighter place. Yeah, exactly. You know, and as my shirt says, be kind, 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 be kind. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And if this is what we got to do to make the world a better place, then you know what? So we'll be it. it. Who are we to, uh, to say otherwise? I'm looking for my thinnest brush possible. But of course, I'm not going to find. Yeah, just to kind of lighten it up. You got some of this pretty, like. Um, How pretty. Oh. Key lime hydrangea, I guess. Uh huh. Just kind of bring some color into it or some light into it, you know? And I'm not going to bring too much in it because I don't want to take away from my actual color scheme, but I'm just going to pop like that much in each end. So it's just kind of like a little bushel. Oh, that's going to make it pop. That's so pretty. My daughter got married in October, you know, a bunch of years ago, but um, those were her colors. The burgundy was just beautiful. Yeah, there we go. Oh my gosh. There we go. 
Look how pretty that is. Down there at the bottom. So pretty. So. And it's um, amazing how you make everything come to life. Well, bye, Serena. She says, I'm heading out to buy paint for my office. Love you all and see you soon. Bye, Serena. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. So going back to, you said your birthday is in October. What day? 17. On the 24th. Oh, really? And my wedding anniversary is the um, 21st. So I love October. See, I like, um, that's the one thing I do miss about living up north is the fall. The uh, fall is beautiful. I miss the colors. Mm hmm Because we don't have them down here. Oh, in Texas you don't? No, we pretty much go from uh, green to brown to dead. Oh. We don't get the pretty oranges and purples and, you know. That is the one thing I do miss about it. But... But you do have beautiful, like, uh, flowering fields because... Every time I do like a, like a flowery type landscape, like meadows, like a, a lady in my group uh, that lives in Texas, like she'll send me a picture. She says, oh my God, are you looking at this as your inspiration? I'm like, no, I had no idea. And she's always sending yeah. me beautiful, like, I don't know what parts of Texas, but oh my gosh, it, it just um, Like we have vineyards and grapevines and stuff like that down here. Uh-huh. Um, and of course we have the Texas blue bonnets, you know. Right, right. But I mean, other than that, it's just kind of eh. <laughs> and I hate uh -huh. to say that. But it's just kind of eh. You know? Not that colorful. And I mean, we don't we get snow maybe like once every 10 years. You know, and it, but I mean, it's mainly up in like the panhandle up like near Oklahoma and uh -huh. there, you know, but here in like Dallas, we don't really get it. Oh, so that's a shame. But I've been down here. Let's see. I moved down here just shortly after I graduated high school. Uh huh. Bam. And that was back in 2010. Okay. So we've been down here about 10 years now. Um, and that very first year we were down here, we had this like really bad ice storm. Uh huh. And the whole basically Metroplex um, was basically shut down for an entire week. Oh, wow. That's the thing about Texas. You get the threat of snow and everything uh -huh. shuts down. Where my friend lives, that happens, I think it was October. She said we were wearing, you know, flip flops and having a barbecue. And the next morning they woke up, it was like 20 and an ice storm and everything closed down. Yeah. Like I was wearing shorts on Christmas last year. Wow. But it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. You can't do anything about the weather as my mother-in-law always says, right? Right. All right. see okay so i'm going to switch cameras back i'm going to turn well i'm going to move my pick machine out of the way i'm going to turn this towards y'all so you can actually see it how pretty and do y'all think it needs a bow? It looks great like that, but I'm sure if you decided to put a bow, everybody's going to be like, oh, wow, that's gorgeous. So. Good morning, Tammy. She said, good morning. I actually slept in. How you doing, Tammy? Here in the San Francisco Bay Area. 
Magda said that's why we visit North Carolina in the fall. Oh, for the beautiful colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sue Bontempo says in Ohio, we've had over a foot of snow since Thursday. Ah. Yuck. Leanne says, especially in the Northeast, if you don't like the weather, wait a day. <laughs> Judy says, hello, everyone. Best wishes to all from New Orleans. Hi, Judy. How you doing there? All right. So Christy says no bow. Gary says it needs a bow. Leanne says she doesn't think so. Hmm. I might add a bow later, but for right now, I think I kind of like it as it is. However, I think I got too much red up top and not enough at the bottom. <laughs> It's funny how when you stand back and look, right? Mm -hmm. But like you said, you're also your own worst critic. That's what happens. So let me clean up a bit here. I'm telling you what, I love this thing. I got it from at home and mm -hmm. it's called a crummy. <laughs> Cost me $10. Wow. And it works wonders for cleaning up litter. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Sounds like a leaf blower. <laughs> it's like a little <laughs> vacuum cleaner. It has these little like bristles on the bottom. Uh huh. And it runs on two AA batteries. Wow. Yeah, Tammy, it needs a little bit more red here at the bottom. I agree. But I'm gonna have to get some more floral for that because I didn't buy enough red. Apparently I bought too much green, not enough red. So I'm gonna have to get some more red to add in here. Lori, like I said, it's a crummy. Um, it's like a little vacuum cleaner for your table. I got mine at home, but I think you can get them on Amazon. Um, and they come in like different patterns and designs. Like yesterday, I think I saw a turtle and a cat and they come in all different kinds of designs, but I like this one, it was cute. It's like a little heart eyes emoji. So yeah. <laughs> You can't beat the price. You can't beat the price and it works wonders. Yeah. Amen, Leanne. Sometimes less is more. Borrow some from the wreath behind me. Uh. I don't think I have any red florals behind me. No, I don't. A lot of the wreaths behind me all are uh, mesh, so they don't have floral in them. And even the ones over on the other wall over there, those are uh, like fall florals, so it's like oranges and yellows. It's not really red. So Matt, does your sister have like a particular specialty, like something that she does that you don't or? She paints. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, she got the art gene. I've got more of the creative slash musical. Uh -huh. So like, I can't paint to save my life. Right, right. So that's a nice combination. Wanda says add a red bow. The only issue with that, Wanda, is the only red I have is like red red. It's not more like the burgundy red. So, I mean, the red would 
really kind of, it would be like true red, you know? It wouldn't be burgundy. So that wouldn't really go. That's my only issue. I don't have burgundy ribbon. Like, I have this really pretty, like, olive color, but I don't have any burgundy to go with it, you know? Um, she paints different things. It just kind of depends on her mood, I guess. Tammy. So like she doesn't really do like florals or anything like that. It's more like everything else. <laughs> do I have candy cane ribbon? Um oh if I do it's not very much. I still need to find something to do with this because this is really pretty. It's um you can't really see that. Let me change camera so you can see. It's like the champagne with the like diamond print pattern. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. But I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do with that yet. So anyway. I found it, yay. Oh, good morning, Sally. My director is here. Um, so Sally, we used olive green, cream, and burgundy. Let me turn it here so you can see it. There we go. So pretty. So. But I think I need more burgundy like down in here. But good morning, Kathy Coleman. Hi, Anel. Hi, Anel. Hi, Kathy. How's everybody doing? I like that first ribbon you held up. Tammy says it looks great how it is. Do I want to add ribbon? See, I kind of want to, but I don't have the right color. I don't have this burgundy color. All I have is like that bright red, you know? And Lord knows I have enough ribbon. Anyway, so Matt, did you just start making wreaths in March, or you've always been creative? No, just I just started in March. Oh, you started making them and your business at the same time. Wow, mm -hmm. that is cool. Good for you. I can't even see. There we go. Well, she looks like she's coming along great, Debbie. Yeah. I mean, it's it's very whimsical, guys. If this is the first time you're seeing me, trust me. <laughs> I paint better than this. So I just want to do like a whimsical kind of like flower girl, flower child. But I also like to keep it, you know, simple and easy to make others realize that even they could paint like, you know, I'm not doing like a realistic portrait here that might intimidate you, but more just like a fun, whimsical lady. And inside of our group, like we've been naming them and such, uh, like the one back here, I don't know if you could see it. Um, she's Miss Kitty from Gunsmoke. <laughs> I 
Yok onu yüzlemiyor ben ara. I kind of want to use these. You know, for any of you reapers out there, most of your florals come on these really long stems. I use pretty much everything on it. <laughs> so like, I'll cut, I always joke that I feel like Morticia Adams cutting off the <laughs> floral, you know, from the stem. But I really like these leaves. So I'm going to use these as well. And I like these jumbo ones. So I'm just going to go and cut them off. And I might not use them on this project. I might use them on a different project, but there's no sense in throwing them away, you know? And all these stems are wired, so like they bend. That's a good thing. So Debbie, what are we naming her? Hmm. I don't know, guys. What do you think we should name her? I always have, to... have all this that came with the burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> so these are kind of fun, but they're like plasticky. I don't really like those. That could work. I want to salvage as much of this as I possibly can. Yeah, I hate to throw anything out. <laughs> Leanne says those will add some dimension and texture. Sally says that is utilizing all the available materials. Smart. Leanne says we should call her Ambrosia. Oh. Tammy says Rosanna. Ambrosia Rosanna, how's that? I'm looking a little more salvage from that, but this one. All right. And then we still have all this pretty greenery, y'all, <laughs> as I buried my phone. Tammy says, uh, I like Ambrosia Rosanna, a collaboration. Uh, there you go. <laughs> and Leanne agrees. Ambrosia Rosa, Rosanna. I'll have to remember. <laughs> Ambrosia Rosanna. Oh, 
Ooh, I'm kind of liking those. Yes, I'm liking these. Do I have another? I do have another. I like those. Let me change cameras, y'all, so you can see what I just did. Y'all can't even see here. I kind of tucked these up in here just to kind of see where, see if I like it or not. But I'm kind of liking. Oh, how pretty. How it looks. You know, get back over here. And that's the one thing you need to keep in mind whenever y'all are making a wreath. Take care of your sides. Because when that door opens, you don't want them just seeing like empty side, you know? So don't just do the front. Uh, well, that's a good point. So you want them to have that experience as soon as you open your door and until they come inside. So Debbie, I have finally decided what I am sending you for Happy Mail. Oh, <laughs> that's right. I won. I won. So you, my dear, I am going to be branching out your horizons. Can't wait. And you <laughs> are going to be getting a wreath kit. Oh my gosh. Oh that I'm going to be putting together for you, that I'm going to challenge you to do live. Oh my God. <laughs> I was afraid you might've been saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do it together? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Wow. Oh, that's exciting in a nervous oh. kind of way. <laughs> I'm branching you out. You are, you are. First of all, it's very generous of you because I'm sure that's going to cost you a pretty penny. And if you'd like, I would help you with that. Oh, no. Because a lot of the stuff I already have. Okay. So maybe I will add that green bow. Yeah, I want to add the green bow. So we're going to do five inch tails, y'all. And we're just going to keep it simple, just a simple bow. We're not going to do anything fancy. Just maybe like a two loop, four loop bow, four loop bow. We'll do a four loop. Oh, Debbie, drink. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny. Yeah, just four loops. It's 
Something simple, something easy. Nothing complicated. However, for those of you that probably have never made a bow, it is probably complicated. I love in the days of like being at a craft fair and people walk by my, oh, I could do that. I could do that. I could make that myself. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, then go yeah, ahead. Sure. <laughs> Let's see you. <ya. laughs> More power to you. Here you go. Yep. Here's your materials. Go at it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> like uh uh um um uh 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 huh that's what we thought <laughs> <laughs> exactly move along so that is my goal for twenty one is to hopefully do a show or something uh huh. You know, something. Something, yeah. I should have, like the whole month of December, I should have been doing like live sales. And I just, I'm always like behind, you know, I'm never a season ahead. <laughs> like people are probably already painting Valentine's stuff already. Yeah, I've seen a lot of wreath makers starting on Valentine's Day. Yeah. And I made one so far. But I guess it all depends on what's popular in your area. Right. As to what you should make. Mm -hmm. So like down here in the south, I don't, we don't really do much for Valentine's Day. Oh, is that right? Um... So like down here in like Texas, Louisiana area, what we really should be focusing on is like Mardi Gras. Ah, uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. More than like Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. Or like up in Leanne's area, it's um, more St. Patrick's Day in Boston. You know? Right. That way. Just a simple bow, nothing fancy. Just something there. How's that? Is the bow the wrong color? Does it take away? Do we like it? Do we not like it? Tell me what you think. Oh, it's pretty. At first I was like, what caught my eye was the red bow in the back left, like behind it. But now that I'm focused on it, oh, I think I like it. Yeah? Yeah. I kind of like it. It adds something to it. Yeah. Sure. I could picture it on a door that color, like a deeper shade. Oh, yeah. And then I will just save all the rest of this for some other project. There you go. Cool. 
actually, I wonder if I have any burgundy in my little locker. Stash. <laughs> Everybody has a stash of some sort, right? Yep. <laughs> Purple, red, silver, red, leaves, poinsettias, no burgundy. I have burgundy pumpkins, but I don't necessarily want to put pumpkins in this. Might be a little too early for pumpkins. Oh, sorry about that, y'all. Black. More pumpkins. A glitter. Nope. No burgundy. <sighs> oh well. I would add tan, Gary, but I don't have any. I wish I did. Thank you, Wanda. Thank you, Sally. Now, do you only get your supplies wholesale, Matt, or do you go like to local shops? I get it everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Candy, she said that it, the bow needs something else with it. I wonder. I wonder, wonder, wonder. Let me see if this will work. Where are you? Because that's not really what I'm going for, but yeah, no. Let me see it on camera here. Yeah, no. That light ribbon you showed. Um, try the other one. If I could get it open, I would. <laughs> So Matt, do you have a area in your house where you store everything that you make before it sells? <laughs> in here. <laughs> it's just up on the walls. Because I know how quickly your craft could take over your house. <laughs> oh yeah.
Let's try some of this. I mean, who doesn't love glitter? Exactly. I do. We'll just do. Something simple. Maybe like two loops to go on top or so. Yeah. Four inches. Now, Debbie, do you work with glitter in your studio? I have like glitter paint. But for Christmas, we did a project with our granddaughter. We got some rounds like that she would use for baking. Uh -huh. And we, we made ornaments out of them. We like taped sections off. First, I would like paint it gold or silver then tape sections off with painter's tape and then put like glue and then throw the glitter on it. So I still have glitter all over the place just from that little project. Embrace <laughs> it. Yeah, they came out cute though. Amazing how far it travels, right? And how it never disappears. <laughs> oh yeah, you'll be finding it clear through next Christmas. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's pretty to look at, but it gets everywhere. It does. My family likes to joke that they suffer from secondhand glitter. <laughs> um, oh, I love it. Oh, that's funny. So I just did one loop on either side and then a center loop over this. So we're just gonna go right through. Well, maybe we'll go right through. There we go. Oh. All right, where'd it go? Come on, where'd you go? There you are. And then we're going to go See, this is what I love. I love collaboration, yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work, I guess, yeah. Come on, go through. It does. There.
Is that better? Oh, pretty. Oh, you're getting a lot of hearts for that. Okay. All right, Gary says yes. Candy says looks good. Okay. Sammy says that is great. All right. So let's, uh, I guess that's the winner right there. Okay. So let me turn this so y'all can see the full thing. There. Oh, I love it, Matt. Change camera. Oh, I have a lot to live up to now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. You shouldn't be. I mean, this is what I do. That's what you do. <laughs> so I think what we're going to do is we're going to do mesh for you. We're not going to mm -hmm. do floral. Oh, OK. Um, so, and I will pre-cut your mesh for you, so you don't oh. have to worry about that. <laughs> Thank you. Because I'm pretty positive you don't have a rotary cutter. Um, I probably do, I just don't know where it is. I used to sew. Before I learned how to paint, I taught myself how to sew to the point where I made a wedding gown. Um, then you know my space is only so big so once I started painting I had to put my sewing machine away so you gotta be um Gary has a uh, confidence in you he says you will do awesome oh well thank you Gary I'll give you advance notice of when I'm doing it so that you could come and cheer me on <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll be fine Well, Magda, you are coming up here in January too. So she says, I hope my followers will love seeing all the talented artists. I shared this to my page and aim to share the following ones as well. So thank you. I appreciate that. And yes, share all of Max. He's going to line up until, is it June already or May or March? Something like that. You've got months and months of lineups already, right? Yeah. It's, um, we're still booking for May. May, okay. wow. That's awesome. Um, who's up next? I don't even remember, remember too many people. January. So January 2nd, y'all, we have Miss Kathy Champagne Ainsworth with Clear, with Clear Sky Fiber Arts. Oh, she's great. And then on January 9th, we have Miss Magda Fox with Crystal Headbands. January 16th is Miss Leanne Marascio with Sparkle at Heart, our very own Sparkle Fairy. Woohoo! Then we have January 23rd, Miss Jacqueline Ibanez with Bubbles, Fizz, and Foam. And January 30th, we have Miss Jan Brown Cook with Jan C's Designs. So that's the month ahead, y'all. Excellent. But yeah, we are booked clear through February, March, April. And we are still booking May. Good for you. So 
Oh, Next Saturday, y'all, we have Miss Kathy Champagne Ainsworth with Clear Sky Fiber Arts. So it's going to be exciting to see what she has to show us. Because I know she just launched, launched her sponsor and alpaca program. So I wonder how that's going. She does amazing work. Yeah, Wanda, I think that's the, um, I think we're, that's what we will be doing. But we're going to go really slow because I don't think Debbie's ever actually made a wreath. So Wanda <laughs> said, um, would be great, Matt, for you to make the same wreath as Debbie. Have a wreath off. Oh. <laughs> give me a head start of like an hour and then maybe we'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a head start of an hour, then I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> actually my husband's pretty crafty and uh, my granddaughter too she's only eight but oh my god she's amazing she loves to draw and paint and she does clay sculptures and she made this drawing and turns it into a piece of jewelry for me for christmas i don't want to i don't want you to looking up my nose, I don't want to go too close, but it's me, my husband, her, her twin brother, and her two cousins. I'm holding the baby. That's that you adorable. Can. Yeah, isn't that great? That was like, oh my God, the best Christmas present ever. How do you do that? Is it like a website or something? It must be, yeah, yeah. My daughter finds all these different like personalized things and she had a book made. Uh, we love baking with the grandchildren but it's mostly like I'll get started then I get distracted with something else and my husband's there with them so they did a book like a pa and Brandon and Juliana baking and the book was like customized with the recipe the handwritten recipe and my mother-in-law's handwriting inside the book and our favorite recipe is and then it's like a copy of the index card with the raisin cookie recipe oh so my, cool yeah really really cool I need two hours on that, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> so Debbie's the first hour. I'll do the second. <laughs> yeah, you could finish it up. Or how about you could paint while I do your wreath kit? Oh, OK. <laughs> that would be fun, huh? OK. Now we're leveling the playing field. <laughs> leveling the playing field right there. <laughs> Would it be cheating if I got to paint my number? <laughs> <laughs> or if you had your sister in the room? <laughs> like I said, I can doodle, but okay. Doodles are good. I can't really paint. Like we did a painting with a twist. Okay. Um, do y'all have that up north? It's like where you go and it's like uh, you bring your own bottle and. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking I actually host parties like that. I, I yeah. host uh, sip and paint parties at a local restaurant. So yeah. um, me and Josh on one of our outings, we did a painting with a twist class and they did uh, Harry Potter Patronuses. So uh, we have matching wolves and uh -huh. the instructor like chalk outlined the wolf for us. Uh huh. And then we just painted over it. Well, that made it easy. That sounds um, like fun. It was fun. But yeah, it'll probably come out looking like a blob or something. <laughs> I don't have any glitter paint handy but red. Let's see what I could do with some red glitter paint. Let me see. Wanda says she can paint a stick man. <laughs> there you go. And I love hosting those parties. The restaurant is a decent size. So sometimes, especially if it's a fundraiser, there'll be like 50 people there or more. Mm -hmm. And they all come in like shaking like a leaf. I can't paint, I can't draw. And at the end, they all have such 
awesome paintings and I love it. And they're all happy with their work and they all look different. Like that's the amazing thing. You know, you can put the same materials down, teach the same way and 50 people will come out with 50 different things. I love it. Like even in my workshops, I encourage people to, you know, post their paintings and the sunflower workshops. Oh, they did such a great job. Tammy says, I just love to watch you paint, Debbie. Oh, thank you, Tammy. I appreciate that. And she also said um, her lips and flowers and dress. Oh, for the glitter? Yeah, I think that's what I'm, I wanted to test it on the flowers to make sure like they didn't change the color, but it's kind of, you know, pretty sheer. So I think I can do that. And then the other one I did is kind of big, but I'll try to see if I could like bring it closer so everybody could see. Because that has a lot of texture. I did a texture background first. And then there's some wording on there and then I paint it on top. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a, a mixed media piece. Yeah, this adds just enough sparkle. One of my followers says she sets her alarm for 9.30 p.m. for when I'm coming on. <laughs> I just get so notifications. Oh, Debbie's, Debbie's live. I was like, okay, I got I to gotta pop over there. So. And you're like one of the first. You're awesome. I have to support my local crafters. Yes. And that'll... That'll take you, you'll, you'll go far with that kind of attitude. I can tell you're just starting out and that's gonna serve you well. I'm just looking, I was, uh, I love pointing out my mistakes. I had the canvas one way, but if you hold her straight, like her earrings are really crooked. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. As Bob Ross says, it's a happy little accident. That's it, a happy little lady. A happy little Ambrosia, Roseanne. Reminds me, Rosanna, Dana, Dana. Gloria, not Gloria, Gilda Radna. Oh my God, she was amazing. From Sat the original Saturday Night Live mm. crew. Let's see. Kathy, you'd like to return in May? She can be out, so she can be outside with the alpacas. Right now it's too cold and windy. Ah, that's a good idea. I'm gonna just grab the other one and show you. So this one, y'all, this is the inspiration for um the color palette I used that's Miss Kitty and what does the word say truth be told beauty is in the eyes of the in the eye of the beholder see I love that painting isn't that pretty this was chosen for um a local exhibit like women of the world a few several years ago yeah I just had so much fun doing the texture and the drippy background and then I painted on top and these I had picked up these are you know like sticky flowers and now all stuff like this if you have Dollar Tree like check your local Dollar Trees they're coming out now with so many things like that it's awesome I love her eyes I use glitter on her eyes so she was my inspiration. 
when I had said, let me do something different. Like, how about doing a face? How about doing a fun lady, a flower girl? So now we have Ambrosia Rosanna. Roseanne or Rosanna? Yeah. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> I'm sure I could work on her and play with her for another hour, but I won't. Mm -hmm. Then I'll see all the things wrong and say, why did I choose that to do? But you know what? It was something different. All right. So Debbie, please stay on the call after we end the live. Sure. So oh, you know, I you. believe it is 11.42 here in Dallas, which means that it is 12.42 in New York. Yeah. And we've been on here for officially a little over an hour and a half. So we're going to go ahead and end things here, y'all. Y'all have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you so, 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 so much for joining us. We truly, truly appreciate you. Thank you, everybody. Be kind, be kind, be kind, be kind, be kind, be kind, be kind to one another. And y'all keep making the world a brighter place. We can't stress that enough. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and a great week. We will see you next Saturday morning at 10 a.m. with Miss Kathy Champagne Ainsworth with Clear Sky Fiber Arts. And we will see y'all next time. Bye, y'all. Bye, everybody.